It is Sunday morning in the Land of Lakes country, and somewhere in the distance, uh, the magnificent uh, Herb Jeffries. And recreating a tribute for him and the Duke Ellington band, Terry Gibbs. Terry will be on stand roughly at 7 tonight, uh, Sunday, at the Artist Quarter, 26th and Nicollet. And if uh, I might, I'd like to introduce you to Terry Gibbs. It's been a million years, Terry, since you were at the Downbeat Monte Kays Club in New York, where Jean Toots Tillman used to fall in after his Belgian Airlines and knock everybody out playing that's right. harmonica. That's when he was almost found at, at the Downbeat Club. I think he played his first thing sitting in with us at that club. He was just new in this country. Yes, and I remember you there and George Wallington and Red Mitchell. And oh, it was those, I hate to say the good old days, but they were great days for music. It was just fun all all time. You never left that stage until 4 o'clock in the morning, and then you didn't want to leave. No, the only break you took was you went over to the Confucius restaurant and had a, <laughs> a bowl of wonton soup or something. <laughs> yeah, if we ever took a break. But it, those were fun days. Those, you're talking about some great days, there. God, you and I go back a lot of years. We certainly do. Well, uh, as we go back... And I, you're 40 years older than me, so you can yeah, imagine what's going on At least on 90, I thought. I, I, I oh, thought. That would make you about 90. <laughs> yes, it would. Not badly. Well, uh, we'll keep steaming along. Yeah. And maybe we'll do it right. I know you do, <laughs> but I, I, I keep rehearsing. Well, you keep, that's why we keep doing it. This is my fifty. I'm spent, this is my fifty-first year. I'm starting on the road. I've been on the road fifty years playing music. That's a long time. It's incredible. And uh, how do you keep that uh, spirit, uh, strength, and orientation? Well, I think it's because I really love to play. As much as I say someday I'm going to quit, I don't know how. Don't you ever do it? I don't know how. See, that's the only thing I'm trying. But I don't know. I love to play too much. I think. And I've really had a ball so far in this club. What I like about the place I'm playing, the artist quarters, it's not big. I like little clubs, intimate places where you're right on top of the people, and there's a great rapport going with you and the people. And the audience tonight was just wild. Well, you and Mikkel Romstead at piano and Jay Young bass and Jay Epstein uh, drums uh, are really uh, Those, you were the hell cooking. They really jumped in, and they... Oh, they 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 are going to your school, you know. And you know what's good about it? It gets better every night. Now, tomorrow, our last set, we'll just be ready to go out and get a job now. <laughs> I see. We'll be ready to start the job now. <laughs> do, you, do you need an agent? <laughs> <laughs> need a job. <laughs> All right, we'll see what, you, what we I can do. It's, it's been fun. I'm, I'm really enjoying myself. I understand that Marv Dahlgren from the Minnesota Symphony dropped in to yes, see Marv, you. In fact, I've been using his vibes all week, and he dropped in. And when those guys drop in from the symphony, you better play good. I've known Marv for the whole back from the 50s. In fact, there was one time when Marv was just playing with the symphony and wanted to get into jazz, and I gave him what you call a few pointers or a half a lesson and whatever it was. He reminded me about that today. And he said we worked on the tune Out of Nowhere and another tune, which I can't remember. In fact, I can't remember what I'm talking to. I'm so wiped out. Well, um, my name is Lake Hammond, and you're Terry Gibbs, aren't oh, you? Are uh, we on the air, Lay? Wait a minute. Oh, listen, uh, <laughs> uh, Dr. Um, yes, who? Dr. Strength Love. Yes. Uh, good night. <laughs> Stay there. Don't go away. No. When you were, uh, I remember those nights at the Downbeat, but preceding that, you know, the, the, there was the Roost and uh, other clubs before Birdland, and uh, names like the legendary Charlie Parker, and of course Dizzy and Oscar Pettiford from Minneapolis, uh, we're working together. One of the greatest of all time, Oscar Pettiford. Oscar and I <coughs> worked together on the Woody Herman Band, too. Yes, you were in that uh, number two, The Thundering Herman. Uh, lay I Did you ever watch, you've seen an accident. I mean, you know, it happens that, that fast, but you don't believe what you see. Well, we were playing baseball on the Woody Herman Band, and I was a shortstop, and Oscar played out in, in left field, and the ball was hit to him, and... It, there had to be a relay, and usually the shortstop goes out for the relay, to the, and he was a left fielder. Well, Shelly Mann was on second base, and Earl Swope was on third. Everybody else threw the ball to me. Three of us yelled to him, and Oscar got so confused that he tried to throw the balls all three of us one time and broke his arm. Do you remember when he broke his arm that time? I remember that because that's a very... I, un unfortunately, I went out there to get the ball because for the relay, the shortstop goes out there, and I watched his arm break. I didn't believe it at all. Everybody thought it was a joke, but I saw his arm make a right and a left turn at the same time. Well, you know, that was an important milestone in his career, if I recall. That moved him 
to work on the amplifying of the cello. Yes, he, he brought that cello out. He start, you're right, he starts fooling with that cello. In fact, he scared us one time on the Woody Herman Band. After his arm got better, what he did... No, he was fooling with the cello before that he busted his arm, but he really didn't, didn't come to it. But what he did, we were playing these one-day theaters <coughs> where the band had to be the whole show, and we all got featured numbers. And Oscar used to go down and play a bass solo, and he went down to play the bass solo, and after about eight bars into the solo, he put the bass down and ran off the stage. And we thought, well, Oscar just flipped out, and he ran back, he went to state, and he ran back with the cello. And it was the first time any of us ever heard anybody play pick jazz picking cello. We never heard that before. And he knocked everybody out. Oscar was one of a kind, you know, he was that good. Well, you, as you know, his family, home-based in this area, right. had a complete family organization, a musical organization. Well, that's a wonderful tribute to Oscar and a great story. I think you were playing in Central Park at the time, you know, or some well, lost... We were out, uh, actually, we were out in, uh, toward, more towards California when that all happened. And, or, and then it actually, within the, we had a sense for a bass player from Washington. It was somewhere out in California, because that's where we used to play baseball all the time. We used to play Harry James Band and Les Brown's Band. That's right. Every band had a ball team. Harry James was nuts. To play in Harry James Band, to start with, you couldn't play in the band unless you were a good baseball player. He stole Don Lamont out of Woody Herman's band because he needed a drummer and a center fielder. So he took him right out of the band. He so that's double, that's double indemnity. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what else. We used to show up with our old shorts and our old sneakers to play, and they had uniforms. On Harry's band, they wore cleats, and they had their uniform, the hats, and they had all these... Looked like They looked like the St. Louis Cardinals. Harry was a baseball nut. I know he was. But those were fun days. And the Woody Herman band, as you know, uh, we had some great players like Stan Getz and Sue Sims and Al Corn. That second herd. Yes, it... And those compositions, uh, the music itself was so rich. Well, early on, it was a classic. Uh, uh, I am very fortunate to have a eight-bar vibe solo that, along with Stan Getz's big solo. Uh, there were some good, good things happening. Wonderful memories, Terry, and it's oh yeah, oh great reminiscing with you. And I, I'll, I'll meet you at the artist quarter tonight, and Sunday. And ladies, I look for my new album that's coming out. Yes, that <laughs> now, this uh, week it's called Terry Gives Dream Band Volume Two: The Sundown Sessions. I'll make sure you get a copy. It's that big band, that dream band that I had in 1959, that unreleased tapes that are so good. We're so happy about them. I know I saw them in the record browsers today, and uh, I'm going to put my hands on a copy as soon as possible. Great. Good talking with you. Hey, me, Elaine. Yeah, you take care. And I'm going to call you from California. All right, good. I'll look forward to hearing from you. Wonderful.